That's what he's really like. He's very passionate. That's how he is, how he was with me. When Rafe met Lisa, it was a case of life imitating art. It seems like the English patient was playing out in real life for you. Yeah, it, it was, honestly. It, it was just so much like that. But little did they realise their mid-air tryst in a Qantas toilet would become the world's most celebrated entry into the Mile High Club. Oh, and that Qantas flight attendant, remember the one who had sex with the actor Ray Fiennes in the airport, in the airline bathroom? She's now been fired. Is that fair, huh? Finally, an airline employee dedicated to customer service, she gets fired. Here's the one flight attendant. I mean, we both did the wrong thing, you know? What we did was, it was, it was silly, it was, it was inappropriate. It was very unprofessional for me as a flight attendant to do what I did, and I'm, I'm very well aware of that, you know? As soon as he started kissing me, I couldn't stop. I, I, I couldn't c control myself, it's like, you know? There was no turning back from that. And... You couldn't wait till India? No, no. Fly me to the moon. This high-flying sex scandal started when actor Ray Fiennes, most famous for playing complex British aristocrats, boarded a Qantas flight bound for India. There he met hostess Lisa Robertson, a former scuba instructor, triathlete and undercover cop. What is this photo? This is a photo when I was in the Drug Enforcement Agency um, around 90, 1995 and that we were doing a cannabis eradication. Lisa's life has already had plenty of drama. A drug squad detective, a weapons and bomb expert. She was highly commended before leaving the New South Wales Police Force burnt out. Undercover in the drug squad? Dealing yeah. with kingpins? Yeah, and buying heroin and like I had to lose a lot of weight. I had to look really skanky if I, I would use that word, you know. And it affected my home life and the way I sort of saw myself after a while because I was around people a lot that were in that drug culture. She started flying with Qantas in 2004, but little did she know as she prepared for work on January 24th this year, the star of her favourite film, The English Patient, would be sitting in seat 2K. Why were you so happy to see Ray Fiennes? Because I just think he's gorgeous. I think he's just absolutely gorgeous. And when I met him in person, well, I didn't meet him when I served him, when I first my first contact with him was like, it, he was such a nice person and he was just, his smile, I melted. He had this most beautiful smile and this most beautiful presence. I want to say that I was making a film in Australia last fall at the most wonderful time with the most wonderful people and I want to go back. We actually talked. He was very interested in me and I was very interested in him and we were like drawn every moment, like every time I would walk past, every opportunity he had, he would want to talk to me. It's a, it's a very plum, plum. I said to him, you know, I love that part in the movie where you say it's a very plum, plum. And he was just so amazed that I remembered that line, you know. And I said, can you say it for me? You know, and he said, and he, he sort of got himself into character and he, and he said it really slowly, you know. It's a very plum, plum. And then I said, can you say it one more time? It was, it was hilarious. Rafe Fiennes was clearly taken with the hostess from Down Under. In the middle of the long flight, with most on board sleeping, Rafe entered the crew area. Uh, a few minutes later he came in, he, he pulled the curtain back and popped his head in and, and said, I hope you weren't sleeping. And I said, no, no, come in and take a seat. And he sat down in front of me. I was leaning forward, he was leaning forward, so we were practically touching legs, you know. And we, yeah, it, you're right, it was obvious then, it was, I, it was obvious to me then something was going to happen, you know. Did you want it to happen? Of course. I'd have to be insane not to. And what happened? Well, after, we talked for a while about lots of different things and then just suddenly he just started kissing me. Like, really passionately, just like on that, on the movie, in The English Patient, like, he's so passionate, you know. It was obvious to me that, you know, this is getting a bit dangerous and 
So I, I held him, grabbed his hand and let him into the toilet because obviously that's a confined area and it, we were less likely to be seen. I knew that I couldn't control myself and that, you know, I wanted, I wanted him to kiss me. I wanted to kiss him. You know, he's one of the most gorgeous men in the world, to me. So did, did you have sex? We had sex, yeah. The practicalities of having sex in an aeroplane toilet, a lot of people are wondering how that's even possible. I know, it is... Um, They're not that big. Anything's possible. <laughs> um, I'm quite flexible. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry, I'm trying to be funny. Um, no, yeah, it, it is hard, you know, but um, yeah, I was just on the sink and then arms, legs everywhere, you know. But Lisa, let's face it, you're a flight attendant, you're at work, you cannot have sex with a passenger in a toilet. Yeah, I agree, it was unprofessional. Um, stupid? Stupid, it was wrong. However, I was on my break. Can I make that point? <laughs> it's hardly an excuse. No, I'm not, I'm not excusing my actions for one moment. I know that I'm wrong and I know that people have wide views about this. But, you know, we, I didn't kill anyone. I didn't hurt anyone. No other customers on the aircraft were knew about this or were disturbed by this. I was on my break. It was an interaction that happened between two people. I know it's wrong and I reiterate that I'm not blaming anyone else. Their affair didn't end when QF-123 touched down in Mumbai. Rafe invited Lisa over to his hotel and it appears obvious neither suffered from jet lag. I'll ask you bluntly, how many times did you have sex? Three, three times that night and then once in the morning. So that's four times you had sex in the hotel in Mumbai, once on the plane. Yep. What was he like as a lover? Excellent, very, very passionate, very caring. I've rated him 10 out of 10 and, that, and that's genuine. That's, that's not, you know, just for, to make it, him look good or make anything look good. It's just true, he, he was excellent. It was, there was this chemistry between us and it was, it was great. But that was when the fun ended. Sex between two consenting adults is fine, but not when it's between a flight attendant and a passenger. A Qantas crew member saw them both leave the toilet and reported their mid-air interlude. Lisa Robertson was suspended without pay. What did Ray Fine say to you when you managed to contact him and told him what had happened? I told him, you know, I'm in, I'm in a lot of trouble and I have to answer allegations to Qantas about what happened in the toilet. And he said, nothing happened. We weren't in the toilet. And I said, remember when you came out of the toilet, you saw a crew member standing there? He said, yes. I said, well, he was still standing there. Well, when I came out of the toilet, and I said, that crew member has made a statement setting out what he saw, and I have to give an explanation to that to save my job. And he said, Nothing happened. He kept repeating himself like a parrot. Nothing happened. We weren't in the toilet. And I felt really alone and I didn't know what to say. You know, I, I, had, you know, I had to come up with some response to Qantas and, and I didn't know what to say. I just felt abandoned. I felt alone. Like I thought, I don't know what I'm going to do. But when Lisa's report denying any sexual encounter between her and Fines was leaked to a Sydney newspaper, all hell broke loose. It was only then she decided to speak out. It came out in the Sunday paper and for all to see and after I realised that my job was gone, I thought, well, I'm just going to tell my side of the story. You didn't think it would be better to just let it go away? I put a lot of thought into it before the, story, before the Sunday paper came out. I was, I was just going to resign and just to protect him and just to maintain some dignity for myself, but once, once it was on the front page of that newspaper, like, it was just horrific for me. My phone wouldn't stop ringing, I couldn't leave my house. I, I, I felt so alone and I didn't know what to do, you, you know? It was horrible. Was and it worth it? It was worth it. The only regrets I do have is the effect that this has had on my parents, you know? They're devastated. They're embarrassed and they're devastated and that, that's quite hurtful to me because 
you know, they have, they've done nothing wrong and they have to live with this, you know. Lisa's father, Graham, hails from the bush. It's the first time they've seen each other since the story broke. And despite the embarrassment, this retired country butcher isn't about to let his daughter get carved up by the scandal. Whatever happens, I'd stick with Lisa, no matter, yeah? And when she was in the police force, I was that proud of her too, so... And she achieved a lot in life, you know. But Lisa shouldn't have been doing what she No, did. I realise that, that's yeah. for sure, yeah. Yeah, so I'll be having a yarn to her probably later on about a few things, so, yeah. Little father-daughter talk. Father-daughter talk, talk, that's right, yeah. Might have smack her in the hand a couple of times, so <laughs> not too hard because you're not allowed to do it these days. <laughs> in the fallout from all of this, Lisa has lost everything. Her career, her lifestyle, her reputation. I've always loved you. In Lisa's favourite film, Rafe Fiennes goes to the rescue of his dying lover in one of cinema's most romantic scenes. But Lisa realises there'll be no Hollywood ending for her and Rafe. Do you think he cares? I know that this would be hurtful to him because he's quite a private person. And, but I don't think he cares about me. I think he's obviously concerned about his reputation, but I don't think this has done anything to, to harm his reputation. Strangers in the night. But it's the lurid revelations of what went on in that Qantas cubicle, which has also cast a cloud over Rafe's credibility. A man who, it would appear, doesn't practice what he preaches. Why was Rafe going to India? He was going there to promote safe sex and uh, AIDS, talking about AIDS. Did you have safe sex? No, not on one occasion, no. In the aeroplane toilet? On the aircraft. So he's going to India to talk about safe sex and you two are engaging in unsafe sex on the plane? Yeah. So I suppose there's a chance that you could be pregnant with Ray Fine's baby? Perhaps, yeah. I haven't really thought about that much. How do you reckon he'd react if, um, and I hope you're not, but how do you think he would react if you were pregnant? I think he'd probably have a nervous breakdown. He's quite, he's quite sensitive, you know. Do you think he'd still say nothing happened? <laughs> I think he's, he's, he's actually admitted that something happened now. Um, I, I don't know. I, I think um, I, I can't answer. I can't answer what he would do because I don't think I know him at all. Do you think he's just a good actor? I think he's just a good actor. A very good actor. Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.